In this video, we're going to learn the general technique of adding shunt elements on the Smith chart. So to illustrate the technique, I'm going to draw a little circuit beginning with my load impedance Z1, which can also be looked at as an admittance Y1. And then in shunt with my load impedance, I'm going to place an inductor, which let's say has a um, reactance equal to XA. And my goal is going to be to find the input impedance uh, to the circuit which is, I'll call it that Z2 or Y2. Now let's remember from circuit theory that when you are adding elements, circuit elements in shunt, you're adding the admittances, the Ys, and not the impedances, the Zs. And I'm going to find my input impedance using the Smith chart. Um, through the use of the Y chart, okay? So my first step is going to be uh, to get Y1 from Z1, or the corresponding admittance, okay? And let's say my Z1 point is right there, and that's my, my gamma vector, my gamma 1 vector, we can say. We know that in order to find Y1, I have to rotate Z1 by 180 degrees, and the magnitude stays the same. So now I'm drawing the Y1 vector, and at this point I switched from the Z chart where I drew, where I plotted Z1 to the Y chart where I plotted Y1. Step two is going to be uh, to find BA from the reactance XA, where B is, BA is my susceptance. I can do that either mathematically by just taking the inverse of XA, but I can also do that on the Smith chart. So let's say that on the Smith chart, that's my XA point. And like we did before, to find BA, I'm going to rotate the gamma vector by 180 degrees and end up on the Y chart. So that there's my BA, which I can just read off the Y chart. Step three is going to be uh, finding Y2, which is equal to Y1 plus JBA. And let's say that Y1 can be decomposed into its real and imaginary parts, G1 plus JB1. Okay, so that is my Y1. And then to that, I'm adding JBA. So the, the solution to that is going to be the sum of the real parts, which is just G1, plus J multiplied by the sum of the imaginary parts. So it's equal to J multiplied by B1 plus BA. Now what that means in terms of the Smith chart or the Y chart is that <coughs> In order to perform this operation on the Y chart, I'm going to I'm going to move on a constant susceptance circle or a constant G circle. No, sorry, I'm going to uh, move on a constant conductance circle or a constant G circle and change my susceptance. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do that on the Smith chart just to see what that would look like. So there's my, so I'm staying on a constant G circle there, and I'm just changing my susceptance exactly by BA, and let's say that I end up at the input admittance point Y2, and so to go from Y2 on the Y chart to Z2 on the Z chart. I would just rotate the gamma vector by 180 degrees. So that was step number four, going from Y2 
on the Y chart to Z2 on the Z chart, my final uh, input impedance point that I was looking for. <laughs> let, me, let me just note um, that when I went from uh, Y1 to Y2, I moved clockwise, no, actually uh, counterclockwise, on the Smith chart or on the Y chart precisely because the susceptance that I was adding BA was a negative number which is why I stayed on a constant G circle and moved deeper into the uh, bottom half of the Smith chart which is the, um, the negative portion of the Smith chart the negative half of the Smith chart so I just used the Smith chart to find the input impedance of an RF circuit that contained a shunt impedance. And the technique that I used involved switching between the Y chart and the Z chart. Now let's talk about how to synthesize reactive elements with just open or short circuited transmission lines, which is an amazing um, part of microwave theory if you think about it, that you can synthesize inductors and capacitors with just copper, a piece of copper trace. So first I'm going to show that this is possible using math, and then we'll take a look at it on the Smith chart. So mathematically we know that the input impedance at any point on a transmission line is equal to the following equation, where Z0 is, is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, ZL is the impedance of the load, and L is the distance away from the load at which I'm measuring the input impedance. So let's see what the input impedance looks like when the load is z equal to zero, and we'll also look at it when the load is in infinite. So when we have a short, the input impedance is equal to JZ0 times tangent beta L. Okay, and we when we have an open, and ZL is equal to infinity, then the input impedance Z in reduces to minus J Z naught cotangent beta L. Okay, so that's that's the math. Now let's look at it on the Smith chart and before I do that let me just draw a little circuit representation of a sh uh, load that's a short circuit followed by a section of transmission line that has a length equal to the variable L. And I'm going to look on the Smith chart um, at into, into this uh, circuit and, and see what is my input impedance Z in. Okay, and I know what it is mathematically. Now let's see what it looks like on the Smith chart. So I start with a short on the Smith chart. That's my Z equals zero point. And since I'm moving away from the load and towards the generator, I'm moving clockwise on the Smith chart. And I end up at some point um, and let's say that that point is on the top half of the Smith chart. That means that the impedance of that point is purely imaginary and positive. And I can read it off the Smith chart as a positive JX. And so what I have done is just synthesize an inductor. Since an inductor at a given frequency has a reactance of a positive X. 
All right, so to summarize um, that part, if, my, if the length is less than a quarter wavelength, then the input impedance um, is mirrors the input impedance of an inductor. Now, if the length is more than a quarter wavelength, but less than half a wavelength, then I end up on the bottom half of the Smith chart and I've just synthesized a capacitor. And thirdly, if my length is equal to or very nearly equal to a quarter wavelength, then I've synthesized a, a shunt LC resonator. And I know that the impedance looking into a shunt LC resonator at the resonant frequency is, is an infinite impedance, an open. And that agrees to where I would end up on the Smith chart. Okay, now let's look at an open circuit and see what we can synthesize for a given length of transmission line following an open. Okay, so there's my little circuit representation of an open followed by a T-line section. And I'm looking into this T-line and seeing an input impedance of Z in. That's the equation for Z in. And on the Smith chart, I start at the open point. Okay, so Z here is equal to infinity. And let's say that I move and end up, uh, I move clockwise on the Smith chart and end up somewhere on the bottom half of the Smith chart. And I can, I can read off the, the resulting impedance. And I know it's going to be a purely imaginary impedance and a negative one. Okay, so let's just call that Jx again, but this time x is negative. So that means that if my length, my T-line length, is less than a quarter wavelength, then I'm going to be on the bottom half of the Smith chart and I'm going to be synthesizing a capacitor. Since the input impedance of a capacitor is a negative um, reactance. Okay, now, if my length is greater than a quarter wavelength, but less than half a wavelength, then I will be on the top half of the Smith chart, again, as I was in, in the first part. And so I will be synthesizing an inductor, just like before. And finally, if my length is nearly equal to a quarter wavelength, then I will be synthesizing a series LC resonator. And I know that the impedance of a series LC resonator that's um, grounded on one end is, is equal to a short at the resonant frequency. So just to summarize, we, can, we found that we can synthesize inductors and capacitors from just um, short or open-ended transmission lines. And this is a very useful feature of microwave transmission line theory.